Okay, so we're going to start our practice test. So here we go. Notice that the entire first page, that the test is going to be two pages, just like the practice test. The entire first page, front and back, is no calculator. The entire second page, front and back, is with calculator. So, no, 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 this is three practice hey, what was that, Oh, okay. So, each one is just two pages long. Is that not like a little length? Okay. The more we get done, the more we get done, the less you have to do. Okay? So let's work on this quietly, Cody. Quietly, focused, here we go. Number one. Change in two degrees. Or up, divide five by one eight and then three times. We eight. know how to do that. To change this into degrees, we're going to remember that pi is 180. So we're going to take 180 divided by five, which is 36. And then we're going to take 36 times three. So the answer is 108 degrees. I don't know how to do it's not long division or the little short division. I honestly don't okay. know. Okay. <laughs> you need to take no, 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 I know how to do times that. 180 I know, divided I know, I know. by 5. Like, I don't know how to do that. You don't worry about it. You know what? I have complete and total confidence in your abilities. You can do it. Oh, I, I can figure it out. 250 <laughs> degrees. Change into radians. This is a little bit trickier. Pi over 180. Equals x over 250. Pi over 180 equals x over 250. And for those of you that are a little confused, it always is pi over 180. Over here, we put the 250 in the bottom because it was a degree measure just like the 180. So your degree measure is going to go down in the bottom because that's where you put your 180. This is going to be your radian measure. So we'll cross multiply. And our answer is 250 pi over 180. Now, does Mrs. Ford expect you to reduce it? Of course I do. These will cancel. <laughs> and then we're left with 25 pi over 18. Okay, I, I can, I, I, I'll just stop. I don't need to practice. I don't want to talk to myself. They pay me these huge mega bucks to come in here and impart my knowledge on you people. Okay? All right. 25 pi over 18. What's your hand up for, Caroline? Okay. Number three. <laughs> Some of us have forgotten how to do number three, I'm pretty sure. Let's draw a picture of it. It says I have an angle of 40 degrees inside a circle with a radius of 10, and I am supposed to find the length of the arc. It's radius times. Very good. Very good. The formula for arc length, as Meredith said, is radius times radians. Very simple. They told me the radius, the radius is 10. Oh, now I got a problem though, don't I? What's this? This is degrees, and what do I need for my formula? Radians. Do I know how to change from degrees into radians? I just did it, right? In another problem, I'll do it again. Pi over 180 equals something over 40. This time it's 40 degrees. So 180x equals 40 pi. And x is going to equal 40 pi over 180. Let's reduce that. The zeros go away. Does 4 over 18 reduce? To 2 over 9. Now, 
somebody's going to get all excited with 2 pi over 9 and put that in the answer blank. That's not it. But that's not the answer. That's the radian measure, right? So what do we have to do to get the answer? we got to multiply it times 10. So that's going to be 20 pi over 9. And that's your answer. It's a two-step problem. You first of all have to get your radian measure. And then you have to take it times the radius. That is your hand up or your description? Okay, let's look at the next one. What does this 180 to 270 fit It's between 180 and 270. 180. So think about your circle. Here's 180 and who's, here's 270. Just put it in the third quadrant. So it's in the third quadrant. Robbie, we call this quadrant three. I got that right. Yeah, me too. Oh my now, oh, hey, that stuff's hard. Now, what do I know about this triangle? Well, it tells me that the tangent <coughs> is one half. What's tangent? So Katoa. Opposite over adjacent. So this is a one and this is a two. Opposite over adjacent. Remember, this is your angle. Now, be careful. They're both negative. We didn't see the negative in the problem, did we? Because it canceled. But you got to mark your picture negative because some of these other things are going to be negative. What's the next step? Do the Pythagorean theorem. So if I square and square and add it up in square root, what do I get? Root 5. You're perfect. Root 5. I know. Now I can start filling in the blanks. What's my sign? Sign. Negative, well, yes, you simplified it right. Negative 1 over root 5 would be step 1, and then negative root 5 over 5? What about my cosine? Negative 2 over... Step one, negative two over root five, but negative two root five over five for final answer. Yes. Now we'll do the reciprocals. Now when you do the reciprocals, kids, flip the one that's going to put the radical on top. We don't flip this one. See, if you flip this one, you see what bad things going to happen. You're going to have a radical on the bottom. I don't want that. So flip this one. So it'd be negative root 5 over 1, or negative root 5. Flip this one. Root 5 over negative 2, which is just root 5 over negative 2. And the cotangent would be 2 over 1, or 2. <coughs> Any question about that? <laughs> OK. 5A. There's several problems in this section. Let's see if we can get them all done. Find the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Well, um, uh, you need to find the degree. You need to find the degree measure, and we know how to do that. So you're going to divide by 4, which is 45 times 3, which is um, uh, pi is 180. Divided by 4 is 45 <laughs> times 3. Times 3 is 135. Now, I'm old, I do this for a living, and I love math. I can do that in my head. If you can't, it isn't a big deal. Just write it down over to the side. 180 divided by 4, figure out what that is, and then take it times 3. It's 135. Now, if you put that in the answer blank, you're missing it. Because you need to find the cosine of that. So we draw our circle. 135 is over here in quadrant 2. How do I know that? It's between 90 and 180. Now, what's this angle? 
Uh, 45. 45. 135 to 180 is 45. You need to be able to label the sides of this triangle. One, one, Adjacent two. over one, one, one root two. One, 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 two. But this is negative one. You guys are the best it's with your It's going to be negatives. negative one over root two, which is negative root two over two. I do. You're very good with your negatives. Your cosine... Your cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so you'll start with this and then re or simplify it to that. <laughs> Megan Barry, you with me? Yes. Next problem is exactly the same kind, different answer, but it's the same kind of problem. So let's see if we can remember. What do we do first? We change it to degrees. So, Tara, you understand how to do that? 180 divided by 6 is 30 times 5 is 150. 150. All right, let's draw it. It also is in quadrant two, right? How big is this angle this time? 30. And kids, we know it's 30 because we're paying attention. That's 150 and that's 180. That's a 30 degree difference, right? Uh, so across from the 30 degree. One, two, root three. Negative root three. Chad, you chat up. I want the tangent. What's tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So I've got the radical thing going on again, and that would be my answer. Now look at C. 180, this is when you're going to use an X and a Y and an R. Exactly, Timmy. We have the sine of pi, which is the sine of 180. 180, now, 180 one is different. It's on what? the <coughs> axis. I'm sorry. It's right, right here. When they're on the axis, Potter, we need to find an X, a Y, and an R. Do you remember that, Potter? Okay. No, so the X, the X Y, and R. No. Just now, R is always one. one. Negative you don't mess X, with that. Negative one. R is one. Now, this point in a circle with a radius of one would be what point? What negative point? one, zero. Negative one, zero. So X is negative one and Y is zero. I want the sign. Y over R. Y over R would be zero over one. Which is zero. Yes. Yes. Now, Michael, Michael, it, I want you to, I'm going to try to help you make the connection. You already know y is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Okay, when I draw this triangle, now this is not, for this problem I wouldn't draw a triangle, but just in general, when I draw this triangle, this is the x side, would you agree with me? And this is the y side, and that's your radius. So it makes sense that it would be y over r, right? Yeah, so that'll help you remember. Okay. This is yeah. One more. Secant, 5 pi over 3. 300. For those of you that aren't sure where the 300 came from, Chief pi Chief divided by 180 is 60, and 60 no, times no. 5 is 300. It's in the fourth quadrant. Very good. This is 300, so that's got to be a 60-degree angle, right? 
Natalie, you staying with us here? Okay. So I know this side's root three, this is one, this is two. That's a negative root three, very good. I want the secant. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it'd be hypotenuse over adjacent? Very good, Mary. Let's do it one more. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Catherine, you okay? Sure. All right, next page. Ay, 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 ay. Those of you that have not, and I'm saying this to everybody in the room, because I was not here on Friday, this was the video lesson on Friday. If you haven't watched that, you were supposed to, if you were here, you were supposed to watch it in class. If you were gone, you were supposed to make time to watch it. This says... I'm not reteaching it. You watch that video. I did a great job. <laughs> this is the angle whose sign is negative root 3 over 2. Very good, Maddie Johnson. It goes in the fourth quadrant. Now, some of you are thinking, how does she know that? She watched the video. Wait, what video are we talking about? From Friday. When we had that meeting. Oh, sub. when the sub was here? Yeah, well, you couldn't hear anything. We weren't here. We were on the street. Uh, no, we were. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the time before. I had no headphones. You can go home and watch the video. Oh, I was, but All Tuesday, right. Tuesday, she was very mean, though. There she are was. rules. There are rules about where you're going to draw an angle. This is, we're looking for an angle. No. Yep. It's positive. It's always in quadrant one. If it's a negative sine or tangent, it's down here. If it's a negative cosine, it's here. Yep. Very good, Matt. Now, tell me about this triangle. The sine is negative root 3 over 2. Well, I, don't even, I could do that for sure, but I don't even need to because what do I know if that's a 2 and that's a root 3? This has to be a 1. These, if, if I haven't given you a calculator, these will be special triangles. Okay? This has to be 60 degrees. How do I know that? Because it's across from the root 3. The answer to the question is negative 60 degrees. Got you. Confused on the negative part? Why, why it's negative 60? Well, because I went down to get that. This is the angle right here. I went down to get it. And so when it goes down, it's negative. When it goes up, it's positive. Let's look at F. Um, I would take off a smidge because with the inverse, uh, three intellectual functions, inverse sine, you know, second sine, second cosine, second tangent, the rules are pretty strict. And for the sine, you have to be either in quadrant one or four, which means you can't even pass through two and three, which you would need to do to get that angle. So you're, you can have exactly the right spot, you'd be in the right location. So I take off a little fraction. Okay. All right. Here we go. This says. Oops. This says find an angle. Now, some of you, even if you haven't watched the video, I have emphasized two days in a row. If I'm using this notation, what am I looking for? An angle. So somewhere there's an angle. And that's his cosine. And I need to figure out what angle that is. Now, as Maddie pointed out, if it's a negative cosine, it's in quadrant two. Those are the rules. Miss Ford didn't write them. You just got to know them. And they're all in that video or in your book. Now, if the cosine is negative one over root two, this has to be a 1, and that angle has to be a 45. 
Now, please don't say 45 is the answer. It's got to be this. <laughs> no, this. What angle would this be? Um, one. 135. 135. Very good from that back there. 135. How do I know it's 135? Well, this is 180, right? And I went 45 less than that. So this is 180 minus 45. That's how I got that number right there. Okay, that's the title. Alright, it says it's a negative, it's a little second. Because this is a sign problem, and this is a cosine problem, and there are different rules. Right? Because the rule for the inverse cosine is it's between 0 and 180. That means it has to be between quadrant, or it has to be in quadrant 1 or 2. Okay. Let's see quickly. Let's do number 6. Uh, we do not have time. I need the sign. No way. We can do this. It says the no, sign is positive. Tell me which quadrants have a positive sign. One. One, one in uh, the bottom one, bottom four, right. Four. Bottom four. Right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> How do I know that the sign is positive oh, because in one and two? Magic method. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sign is Y over R. That was it. Where is Y positive? Oh. On the top. Oh, you have to finish it on your own. Your homework is finish this. Finish it. Finish it. No. Practice test one. Finish practice test one. Oh, I think it's awesome. Practice test one. Uh, Julie, can you hit the off button and give me my iPad?